Hey guys, welcome back to uh, another Tuesday tip, surveying with Robert. So uh, I wanted to show you guys uh, a way to put some lights on SX-10. So when you're doing your photogrammetry part of your scanning, you can actually uh, be able to take photographs and be able to see. So sometimes we get in a situation like uh, maybe in a, an industrial type situation where we have low lighting or we're in a room somewhere um, one of the scans I did in, uh, in Starkville with a fellow surveyor, uh, there was no electricity in the building. We didn't take any lights with us, so a lot of our photographs were really dark. So that's what kind of gave me this idea of attaching these lights that I use for these videos, uh, actually attaching them to the SX-10. So uh, I want you guys to uh, watch this little uh, intro I put together, and I'm going to jump in the truck and run down to the shop, and we're going to... Um, we're going to set the scanner up with the light on it, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. And then we're going to look at the data. So this is my new studio slash office. So what I've done is I framed up a a um, 16 by 20 office slash studio inside my shop building. Um, sprayed spray foam in it and everything. There's no lights in there. I thought this would be a great way for me to show you guys how to light an area uh, and be able to scan. So um, let's, um, let's get hooked up in here and let's take a look at how this is gonna work. Okay, as you can see what we've got set up here is my own little rigging. Um, this is probably the best setup, the GoPro. I'm gonna put a link uh, in the, um, the body of the, the video where it says show more, the description and stuff. I'll put a link to this stuff right here, this clamp and everything, because this clamp and everything would work with this bigger light. This is a camera clamp. It's kind of a little bit big and bulky. You may not want to use that. But this clamp works pretty good. Uh, one of the things I did learn was is that I needed to set my lights, offset them on the handle so that um, the scope didn't hit it because if the scope hit it, it would stop doing what it was doing. So um, these lights really don't weigh very much. So I don't think there's a whole lot of problem with uh, an issue of, you know, maybe balance and this, that, and the other with the SX-10. I'm not the manufacturer, so I have no idea. But uh, I would say in a pinch, this would work great. I'll also give you some links to um, some tripods that I use that you could actually set up uh, and put some of these lights on if you needed to as well. The idea behind this is that this is such a small area and if I was in a room where I had to do a bunch of piping or something like that, where I was scanning you know, something mechanical um, and I, I really didn't have room to set up lights or I didn't, or I didn't want the lights in the way of my scan, then this might be a good way to do it. So, but keep in mind, you don't need the lights for scanning. You only need the lights for the photographs because without the lights for the photographs, you got nothing, it's dark. So let's, um, let me see if I can get set up here. And we're gonna do a new job called like shop. Um, and I'm just gonna do this scale factor of one. SX10. Uh, we'll turn it on, except for the fact I took all the batteries out of it. Whoop. I'm gonna grab a battery. I bet it works better with the battery. Okay, I'm gonna close this door over here. Woo! Got dark in here. You see anything? I can't see anything. Now I can see. <laughs> check it out. So 
If you can imagine that this room was totally dark, and I'm going to show you the scan I did, and I'll show you how to bring it in and everything. Uh, but basically, as this thing is turning around and getting pictures, what I found was that big light up on top worked really good for getting the stuff up high. I can't tilt it down because if I do, then it's in the way of the camera looking up. But what I found out is I can tilt that back just a hair, and then I can use this little light. And then as it goes around, because the problem I was having was without this light, it was darker on the ground. So it being darker down here on the ground, my photographs looked weird. I had light and dark. This kind of balanced my lighting out. So I was able to do it like this. There again, once you do the, the, the photographs, just pan it, pan it, just um, pause it. Got too many things going on at the same time. Um, so like, Let's do it this like this way. Let's go, I'm gonna say measure, scanning, full dome, panorama, overview camera. It says it's gonna take 40 images. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take 40 images real quick. And I'm just gonna show you how this works. And then um, I've got the data where I actually scanned this last night and um, I'll show you guys the data set from this room and you can see how well the lighting worked in it. So keep in mind that the photographs are what uh, colorizes your pixels. So if you want imagery and you want a colorized um, scan cloud, then you're gonna have to add some lighting to it because without this lighting, you saw how dark it was in here. Without that light, mm -mm, you're not getting much done. So, um, and then you've just got a, a basically a white color, uh, white cloud is all you're gonna end up with out the photographs. Okay, so the gun's fixing to flip around. See here, it flipped around. Now that's where you gotta be careful when it flips like that because if, when it turns upside down, if, if it hits anything on that bar, it'll stop and you, it won't get your photographs. But you'll notice how it's turned upside down and I'm getting photographs of the ground now. So I've got this light pointing towards the ground. So that's lighting up the ground um, almost as well as that light is because of the distance. So those photographs will work pretty good. So now we're at 40 of 40 images. You can see my screen here. So now it's going to start scanning. So what I can do once it starts, we'll hear it spin up. Okay, I'm going to pause the scan. So now at this point, I can take my lights off. And this would probably be a lot easier if I was to set something down. Okay, so once I'm done, I can say continue scanning. It spins back up. And we continue scanning. So that's an option for you. Um, you can either leave the light on take the light off, whatever you want to do. Um, but I would only recommend this in a pinch. I wouldn't do this every time I was scanning because it could probably do damage to the SX-10. So anyways, hope that works out for you guys. How's that, better? Um, Tuesday tip, lights, camera lights. So I'm gonna put a link to all this stuff. So I got hooked up on the affiliate program with Amazon. So if you guys decide you want the lights, if you click on my link, I actually get a few dollars back. So anyways, guys, um, check it out. Uh, lighting, huge. And it's not only for the SX-10. I mean, that could be with any other scanner that you've got, Faro, whatever. Uh, cameras need lights. End of story. Okay, what'd you guys think? It's kind of cool, wasn't it? Being able to attach those lights to the top of the uh, SX-10 and being able to to actually see in the room. So now let's look at the data. So I've already copied the data over using my handy dandy transfer cable um, over to my computer. So let's just create a new project. 
and we're going to use uh, US survey feet scale only. We'll say OK. I'm going to get rid of this grid. I am going to jump over here to the other screen. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. OK, there it is. Jump over here to the other screen. I'm going to find that data. And I have it under NEI demo data. And I believe it was shop number three is the file. We're going to bring it over, drop and drag. You guys remember that you need the related file folder and you need the job folder in the same directory uh, to be able to do this. Bring in the scan in. One of the things I need to mention is that uh, I use the fixed exposure on the um, on that gun on the the camera itself. So using that fixed exposure wherever it took that first photograph at, that's where it um, uh, it got the exposure from. So uh, it used that exposure for the rest of the photographs, and it actually turned out pretty good. You'll see here. Um, on this data set. So we just finished colorizing. We brought it in. Let me go to uh, 3D view. So you can see in 3D view, you can see we've actually got some good color. And without that light, that room would have been totally dark. So let's, uh, let's do the true test here. Let's look at the photograph. So if I go to a station-based view, Okay, with this station-based view, one of the things you're going to notice is that um, you can tell the difference in the lighting from the bottom to the top, but we still have good lighting. And this is what I was talking about, about overhead. So I've got that camera pointed straight up, and uh, or camera, well, I've got the light pointed almost straight up. It's kind of tilted, so it's shining. So when the gun flips up and it's looking at Zenith, um, I'm still getting some good images because the um, uh, the light isn't interfering with the image itself because I, I laid it back just a little bit. So uh, without that camera, that room is pitch black dark. You would have never gotten this. And you can see that I did this, I actually did this last night. I actually scanned it and took these pictures and it was pretty dark in there because I actually went ahead and put my door up there. So. Um, as you can see, worked out pretty well. Let's go back and look at the scan data. As we can see, we've got pretty decent data set going on. So, anyways guys, that's our little tip today on um, using the lights. So uh, I hope this helps you, um, kind of gives you some ideas. Like I said, um, with that affiliate link, the Amazon links that, I, that I'm putting in the body of this um, uh, YouTube video, uh, I'm also gonna put some tripods that I use or the, some camera tripods uh, that I use uh, for the lights and stuff. So, you know, if you're in a situation where you can set stands and lights up, these lights are battery powered so, uh, and they last a pretty good long time. You might end up buying some extra batteries depending on how long you're going to be in there. But uh, if you're in a low light situation, these, these camera lights work really well. As you can tell, I've got one, I've got that big one on me right here. It's pointed at me. Um, so guys, I uh, hope this helps. If you got any questions, just hit me up. Um, and uh, as always, uh, if you would subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you have, God bless you. Thank you very much. Um, and if you like the video, just give it a thumbs up so I know, kind of keep me in the correct direction where I need to go with this stuff. So um, you guys be safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.